Hello everybody. Today we are going to explain to you about structure activity relationship studies of beta lactam antibiotics and we will be detailing about penicillins. We will be talking this about this topic in a total of four videos. In the first two videos we will let you know about what is the mechanism of action of penicillins, what are the problems of penicillins. And the next two videos will be targeting on the structured activity relationship studies. So before we go into structured activity relationship studies, we must know what is the mechanism of action of penicillins, which is a beta lactam antibiotic. The learning objectives for this video is that the student should be able to understand the role of cell wall and transpeptidase enzyme in a bacteria. Understand and explain the mechanism of action of penicillins. Explain the importance of the beta lactam ring in the structure with respect to its mechanism of action. So, let us go to some of the history of about penicillins. Penicillin was discovered in 1928 by Alexander Fleming under mysterious circumstances, accidental circumstances. And but later he said that this antibiotic shows good antibiotic actions and antibacterial actions but it is very difficult to isolate it. Later on in 1938 Florian Chain found a mean of isolation and then they showed that this uh, extract was showing a very good antibacterial activity. It was ineffective against many bacterial infections and therefore new bacterial agents to be discovered was still important and so this pursuit lead to chemical modifications of the basic penicillins that were obtained from the fungus to produce enhanced antibacterial agents. Now what are the strategies to target a bacteria because infections can be caused by many microorganisms and bacteria is one of the most important microorganisms where we need to target them because they cause a lot, lot number of infections. A bacteria can be inhibited or killed by many mechanisms. This would include either inhibit the cell metabolism of the bacterial cell or inhibit the bacterial cell wall synthesis or let the drug interact with the plasma membrane, disrupt the protein synthesis within the cytoplasm or inhibition of the nucleic acid transcription and replication. So penicillins among all these mechanisms of actions act by inhibiting cell wall synthesis without affecting the host cells. This is very important. So let's go to what is a bacterial cell wall, what is the significance of it. The bacterial cell wall helps in order to survive a large range of environmental factors. If cell wall gets damaged, water would continuously enter the cell due to osmotic pressure causing the cell lysis due to swelling and possible bursting. Rigid cell wall does not stop water flow but prevents cell bursting which is a mechanical phenomenon. Since cell wall is absent in human cells, bacterial cell wall is a suitable target for drug designers. So what is the bacterial cell wall consist of? The bacterial cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan structure, that is peptide, peptide and sugar units. The bacterial cell wall is made up of two different type of sugar units called as N-acetyl muramic acid commonly known as NAM and N-acetyl glucosamine NAC and peptides attached to them. These peptides are cross-linked to each another at alanine and glycine residues to form peptidoglycan which is which provides strength and rigidity to the bacterial cell wall. So how does this happen? 
Actually, in the formation of cell wall, there are many steps involved. One of them is the preparation of the raw material, like preparation of NAG, NAM, peptides. Then, second step is the joining of the sugar moieties with the peptides. And the last step is cross-linking of one peptide with another peptide in two different strands form causing formation of peptidoglycan. So there are around 30 enzymes involved in this biosynthesis. And the final cross-linking step is inhibited by penicillin. And this step which is inhibited by penicillin is carried out by transpeptidase enzyme bound to the outer membrane of a bacterial cell membrane. So if you see this structure, you see that this part is, this is the transpeptidase and these are the binding residues of amino acids. This is the serine residue which is a very very important residue involved in this peptidoglycan formation. What happens is, if you see this structure, there are two alanine residues, there are two alanine residues in that peptide. That means the last two amino acids in that peptide are alanine. The serine hydroxyl group attacks the carbon of one of the alanine residues and gets attached to it causing removal of one of this alanine. So one of this alanine is separated from the peptide thereby decreasing one of the amino acids from the peptide structure. Later on the glycine of another peptide then attacks this alanine which is attached to the enzyme and causes displacement and formation of a dipeptidoglycan structure, this one, and the enzyme is regenerated back. Now what does penicillin do? If you see this structure, this part of the structure of penicillin would resemble somewhat to that of the alanine residue that we saw in the earlier slide. Therefore, it has a tendency to bind at the same place. This serine hydroxyl again would attack this carbonyl group thereby forming a bond and this bond that is formed is irreversible unlike like we saw in the last case where the transpeptidase is regenerated back. But here the transpeptidase is not regenerated back. The enzyme is not able to carry out the transpeptidation or peptidoglycan formation. And this is called as inhibition by penicillin. So this is how it happens. The peptide chain although present but there is no place where it can bind and this is how it blocks the peptidoglycan formation. This is the references that we have taken for this compilation of all the four videos. Thank you.